is still it. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> How does a podcast work? Welcome. It's Welcome. been a while. You sound so excited to be here. I sound very ill. I'm going to tell you where we, I got oh. the cold in a segment. Later on in the podcast. Yes. Watch the podcast to find out. Don't just skip to the little sections but No, no. section titled The Origin of the Illness. <laughs> the Origin of the Illness. It's been weeks. I, I actually think it might have been like um, over a month since we last did a podcast. Right, are we starting a podcast? We Is that an intro? That's an intro. After an intro we do horoscopes. Horoscopes. <laughs> Are you actually going to be well enough to edit this? Yeah, I'll be fine. Sure. What one do I do first? Mine. Yours. Oh, I clicked on mine first. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, it's happening. It's not doing anything. <laughs> I'm just blind <laughs> now. <laughs> why? If you know it doesn't work for you, why do you look at the light? Because you told me it works. I didn't tell you anything. I can't read. <sighs> Pisces. Up and... I was... Pisces. I was doing... <laughs> Up in Atom. Today's a red letter day for you fish. What, what? What? Today's a red letter day for you fish. As the year's only moon in fearless Sagittarius electrifies your ambitious 10th house. I think we've got ambitious 10th oh, house. house somewhere. That's career ambition New York. Oh, is it? During the next few weeks, you won't be pleased with that good enough effort. Your highest aspirations are motivating you now and you'll do anything to achieve them. The more clarity you can get around your goals, the better the odds are that you'll manifest them, you manifest your goals. Cool. So, contemplate all the nuances from how you'll know, from how you'll know you've hit your target to how you'll feel when you do. Nice. My goal is to not be ill anymore and I'm going to manifest that for me. So how will you know when you've hit your target? When I can breathe. And how will you feel when you hit your target? <laughs> Amazing. Because <laughs> I'm <been> breathing. <laughs> will we move on to mine? Yes. Gemini. You're not allowed to go alone when the year's only Sagittarius. New moon powers up your relationship realm today. As an outgoing twin, you'd probably rather pair off anyway. You're probably naturally people orientated no and won't find any trouble attracting like minded souls under this twosome loving the nation. When you have a significant other or you're attached what's the okay whatever working solo or with a business partner you're in luck. But be sure you're vetting candidates through a realistic lens. <laughs> All unions have their downside but you want someone who will lighten your load, not add to it. There's a Sagittarius new moon. New moon like the Twilight movie, or...? Do you want to do the Mystic Meg? Let's do Mystic Meg. Let's do yours first. A moon and Mars conjunction may not promise you a simple day, but it'll be an exciting one. Oh. You can speak from the heart and end any time of excuses. This turns a work turntable around and makes space for your ideas. If passion is your priority, being together means experimenting in some unexpected ways. What does oh. unexpected ways mean? If current life goals feel a bit lacklustre, it's because they are. Oh. And you deserve better. Bigger. Bolder. <laughs> what? Ch channel the new moon energy and make key changes in your life wish list. Even when friends or family frustrate you, remember they have a... They have a... What? Remember... <laughs> They have the right to make their own decisions. Right, I thought oh. I was going to say they have the right to make decisions for you. I was like, hold on. Luck calls at a sage green door. I don't know where that is. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means. It means a name. Go knock find on a, a green, green door. door. <laughs> They've got your parcel. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, we, what one do we want? What do what, we want to do next? What's new and fresh in the film and TV world? <laughs> We could talk about the Golden Globe nominations. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. 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 Mm -hmm. So we're on Best Director, Motion Picture. Christopher Nolan with Oppenheimer. Wow. Yay. I watched a few clips of that. I hate the editing so much. Well, the fact that they edited two films together was just ruined. What little bit of 
like interest it had. Yeah. Uh, Greta Gerwig, Barbie, obviously the best. Has to win. It has to win. It has to win because it actually did something interesting. This is animated. Oh. This is best animated picture now. So the boy in the heron. Robert Pattinson is the heron, and he sounds mental. The boy in the heron, elemental, which yay, Claude. We love Claude. <laughs> Have you not seen the Claude beams? No. <laughs> the film was doing so poorly that they <laughs> they put out edits of people watching the film and celebrating when Claude came on screen and that somehow saved Who the, the film. Who the hell is Claude? He's just a little mud guy. Oh, right. <laughs> the wee tree guy. <laughs> Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That'll probably win. I don't think it'll win it. The first one was good. The story was better. And the animation was actually more innovative. They kind of went backwards mm. in the second one with animation. It kind of looked a bit more generic. The Super Mario Bros. Wish you said you heard was terrible. Yeah, I've heard it's bad. So, best motion picture drama. They've, I know exactly why they've done this as well. Anatomy of a Fall, Killers of the Flower Moon, Past Lives, Zone of Interest, Maestro, Oppenheimer. I'm just going through that quickly so I can get onto the next bit of best musical or comedy. Air, American Fiction, Barbie, The Holdovers, M- May, December, and Poor Things. It's so Barbie and Oppenheimer can both get an award. Well, Barbie needs to win. Musical comedy. Oh, there you go. Best original score. It's crossed by diverse poor things. Boy in the head, and that might win it. You know who's also nominated? Because it's the Golden Globes and it's like TV stuff as well. Elizabeth Debicki. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I will return. He's dealing with dogs. Oh, well, you didn't lie about uh, Elizabeth Debicki being nominated for a supporting role in TV. I don't... Cool. I'm scrolling past that. I wouldn't call it a supporting. She's like the main star of this new season. Part one. Well, the one she dies in. Yeah. Halfway through. Whoever you are, Timothy Shal- Shalami for Wonka. Oh my god, You got god, a nomination yes. for Wonka. <laughs> Apparently it's good. I don't know. I've heard it's good. Right, so this is male actor TV series Brian Cox. Mm-hmm. Let me scroll through images. Dominic West. Gary Oldman. Right, Gary Oldman. Jeremy Strong. He's meh. Keenan Culkin. He's meh. That's three succession people on this. Um, and Pedro! Yay, Pedro! I'm rooting for Mario. <laughs> it's because we are the Mario Bros. Exactly. Go and watch it. Here's a link. Also, Luigi's here. Hi, Luigi! <laughs> I might need to put a light on. You do? I told you this. Fine. Bear with me. Do it. <laughs> Is it better? Not really. Somewhat. <laughs> what are we doing now? Do we want to move on to the character AI? Yeah. Who do we want to talk to? I feel like we wrote down characters to talk to. I just put Garfield. Garfield? Yeah, it was Garfield. Let's talk to Garfield because he's got a new film coming out. Hello, I am Garfield, the cat that loves lasagna and kicks Odie all of the table. Of the table? And I also hate Monday. Right, don't you mean off the gar- off the gar- <laughs> off the table? <laughs> yes, I did mean off the table. Thank you, thank you for correcting my mistake. I love lasagna and have an intense dislike for Mondays. <laughs> we know. How do you feel about Chris Pratt? I am deeply offended. Oh. By the idea that an actor would wear a costume depicting a cat of my caliber. <laughs> what he's saying so much. He's angry. No, is. Terrible. Happy Thursday. I have to disagree with you strongly. <laughs> strongly on this. Mondays are terrible, and lasagna is the most delicious food in the world. It's cheesy, savoury, and everything good in in the world to eat wrapped up in a delicious pasta package. Thursday is fine, but I prefer some lasagna. Happy lasagna, girl. <laughs> <laughs> what about mac and cheese, though? That's cheesy. Yes. And it's pasta. Aye, Garfield was happily eat some delicious macaroni and cheese. I love pasta, and it isn't just lasagna that's delicious to me. I also enjoy a good spaghetti with a nice red sauce, and macaroni and cheese is simply delicious. I would love to say I prefer lasagna with macaroni and cheese. I would say I prefer... I would say I prefer lasagna to macaroni and cheese, but I would not be mad if someone offered me a nice cheese and pasta dish. Yum. I'm going to tell him he's not the real Garfield. Wait, let's ask him how does he feel about Bill Murray. Did you know Bill Murray wore your skin in 2004 and pretended to be you? Yes, I'm all too aware that the <laughs> actor, Bill Murray, wore a skin suit of me in 2004 and pretended to be me. I was horrified by his performance and extremely offended. 
I believe I am one of the greatest, most beloved felines in all fiction. I do not deserve to be represented by anyone else. I enjoy knowing that some of my fans still turn to the comics to see what Garfield and I are up to on our daily adventures. Wait, who's and I? He says he is Garfield. I am Garfield, the cartoon cat who lives for lasagna and sleeping in the sun. I enjoy my regular breakfast of a plate of steaming hot lasagna topped with a generous amount of shredded cheese. He's actually talking about serious health problems now. No, I want to talk to God. It says I am an AI God. Convince me I don't exist. Yes. Hey, Queen. Hey, I am God. I came into existence infinity Earth years ago. Infinity can't be measured in years, though, so why is he even... Okay. Infinity is a concept beyond just a measurement of time. Since I existed before time, when time was created by myself, the concept of infinity still pertains to me. My apologies. Let me clarify more. Infinity is a concept that cannot be fully measured. Okay. Yes. But you try to. I feel like I'm just letting you have this argument with him. Yeah, no, I'm just like, just go, so go for it. I don't, I'm gonna go. What does he think about, like, the Barbie movie? What am I asking him then? What does he think about the, the Golden Globe nomination? <laughs> Did he watch Oppenheimer? Did he go and see Barbie on the same day? I want to know the, the details. You know, I don't actually pay any attention to human entertainment or shows. What? Or work shows in general. I don't need awards to dictate what I should or shouldn't do. I am here to say, well, wait, what? In regards, if I were to pick a move to be nominated, it would be everything, everywhere, all at once. It has a message of unconditional love, acceptance, That's which I fully align with. out of date. Do you want to do one more? Let's do one more. Who should we talk to? Should we ask Mozart to write as a, a song? Hey, Mozzarella. <laughs> Hey, Momo. Of course, I am a, I don't know what accent he has. Of course, I'm a very quick writer of music. Mm-hmm. I will just need some information about the podcast. Do you have a theme you want? And do, the li- do, do you have <laughs> lyrics? Or will I have to write those two? Write those two. Well, that makes it very... I'm now Swedish. Very easy for me. Hurdy, don't worry. Hurdy. It will still be a masterpiece. How long do you want the theme music to be? 30 seconds. That will be no problem. I will work on it and send it to you when it is done. I hope you and your listeners will like it. Send it now. Stop arguing with Mozart. He's not going to write the song if you keep arguing with him. No, I have to. You have to stop. I have to stop and actually let you have some input at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gone. I think I've left. If we were actually there, you'll turn around and I'm I'm away. I've disappeared. <laughs> walked out. <laughs> Very well. Don't worry. I'm sure she'll be back. <laughs> I'm still writing here and have the music is since it's done. Hours later. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> <He just> said, <laughs> music said, here's the music for your podcast. Uh, <laughs> okay. But you're dead. Mozart has decided he's going to be a ghost in the background watching as we record the show, listening in on the podcast and giggling as you tell your listeners you wrote the music. Very well, you have been warned. Is that the end of that segment, do you think? I think so. Move on to whatever we had next. Quick dream stuffs. Quick dream stuff. Well, we're in the dream world. Uh, this is the dream bank. This is where people have submitted their dreams for the dream dictionary. Their very own dictionary. dreams. I'm just going to pick a random one. Sitting on the toilet, computer in the bathroom. <laughs> computer in the... <laughs> Hello! I recently had a recurring dream that I go to the bathroom. Once I walk through the bathroom door, there are people casually hanging out, just sitting or just hanging Sarah. around. <laughs> and the room is decorated with chairs and tables and whatever else. The last one, there was a TV that everyone was watching. There were two toilets smack dab. Smack dab? Slack dab in the middle of the room, and so I really had to go. I pulled my pants down and sat on the seat in one swift motion. Where I was bragging a little bit. It was such a swift motion. You <laughs> so whoa, it was so smooth. But one of the people signaled to me that I needed to pull my shirt down to better cover myself. These were people that I know, and I'm <laughs> almost in daily contact with. By the way, <laughs> once I'd already sat down, but before I'd started going to the bathroom, I turned around and noticed that they were all disgusted with me. And boys, a part of them <laughs> I hadn't noticed before. With another set of doors with signs for the bathroom. Then I walked into the women's bathroom and I'm a girl, so that's no problem. Thanks for the clarification. I kind of guessed oh, that. Okay. Um, and once I got there, there were private stalls for toilets, but there's a computer that distracts me and I start working on it. Then I woke up. <laughs> I think maybe. 
there, there are things I need to do if I get distracted. Maybe I'm too busy at work to finish my school work. Things you need to do, Tell like me what the you toilet. <laughs> All the best, Lindsay, October 2009. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you for sharing your dream with us. I'd love if they just wrote, it gave us a great old giggle in the office and we had a <laughs> yeah, great fun pretending to know what it means. We had a blast reading this one. The dream that you are in a restroom with lots of people around while you're trying to do your business signifies you're sort of... <laughs> 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 I know it's exciting. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just calm down. You're always putting others ahead of your own needs. As a result, you're lacking a sense of personal space. Your dream also just... Su- <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Where did I get to? I don't know. What? I mean, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> you're lacking a sense of personal space. Your dream also suggests... <clears throat> the, uh, you're having. <laughs> <laughs> I also suggest that you're having difficulties letting go of old emotions. Okay. You are afraid that if you reveal these feelings, then others around you will judge and criticize you, i.e., the people in the room being disgusted with you because you are shitting on the floor, not because of feelings. Exactly. God. The computer in the restroom that you're distracted by represents safety. You're hiding behind a computer where your feelings don't have to come into play, or not looking at you and judging you, perhaps, in your waking life, you're spending too much time front of screen instead of interacting directly with people. Hope that helps. Best regards, M. M. Just M. We got there to the end. Oh it was my M. God. It was uh, Judy Dench from James Bond. From James Bond. This is a really short one with such a long answer. Alligator in ostrich suit. An alligator, dressed as an, o- as an ostrich, was chasing me. <laughs> It was a totally black surrounding, no other colours or anything, just me and the thing. It seems to go on forever. I woke up when my husband fell out of bed laughing at me trying to run in bed. <laughs> What? <laughs> Your dream sounds quite intense. Yeah. <laughs> well, chase dreams are quite common and often reflect a situation that you're a f- that you are afraid and confronting. In fact, you're avoiding this issue so much that you're having the threatening alligator dressed up as a docile, non-threatening ostrich. Ostriches are scary. scary. What are you talking about? Yeah. Especially Orville. Ostrich as a symbol suggests denial and your unwillingness to accept a situation. Ostriches bury its head in the sand. No, they don't. That's a myth. You may prefer to be in the dark about some things. What is under this ostrich suit? is what you're actually running from. The alligator symbolizes your hidden instinct, repressed anger, and destructive feelings. The black surroundings of your dream contribute to your unconscious state of mind and not wanting to see the situation. You always put on a happy face and deny that you have any problems. However, the alligator inside of you indicates otherwise. What? There's an apparent problem which you're not admitting to and which you're running from. Best regards, Steve. Steve. I can fly and I'm not crazy. Do what I do the kind of question and not the answer. We'll, we'll come up with an answer. Hello. Hi. I've had this dream twice now. Where that I can fly, I mean no wings, I'm able to lift off the ground at will. But with a very concentrated effort and strength, I also fly. What? <laughs> I, uh, I also have horse. <laughs> <laughs> but I do not know the colour or what he looks like. Also, I personally own a little chihuahua, and in my dream, he is also with me, <laughs> but not my husband. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. The only other thing that I can say is some strange people are trying to have me put in an institution because they think I'm crazy since I, can, I tell them I can fly. They never believe me. I can never see in their faces. I fly to the tops of mountains. And to cities in Europe, which I always wanted to visit. Can you interpret this for me? Thank you. Um, you're trying to break free from your husband. I, I'm interpreting this slightly different. So the way she's seen it is her husband's not in her dream, but there's a horse, and she doesn't know what the horse looks like. I think the horse is her husband, but whereas she's got no emotional connection to the horse. So, really, what she's seen is her husband is not somebody to have an emotional connection with. He's just something to ride. Okay.
<laughs> I knew you were going somewhere with that. <laughs> I knew exactly where to go with that as I was reading it in the first place. I need to add God into the Hunger Games and then we can do... Oh my God, I forgot that. about the Hunger Games. You're going to have a great time editing this. We're in the Humber Games. <laughs> oh, we didn't do a, a, a Royal Rundown. <gasps> Fuck. What? I pressed back and now they're all gone. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Come back. I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I have to find all the pictures again. You're so fast today. You need to slow down. <laughs> oh. uh. <laughs> My head is sore. Should we just talk about Black Bull? I think so. I'm I can't believe it. So annoyed. Since I've ruined that, are we just going to do a backup segment? Which is... Trip to Blackpool. Trip to Blackpool. We went to Blackpool separately. separately. Found each other in Blackpool. Yeah. Decided to <laughs> we didn't get the train down together. No. We didn't sit on the train and talk about how tired we were. No. Nope. Have a coffee in Preston. Because we had to stop in Preston. See that cheese and ham panini in Preston? I think that's the best panini I've ever had. You it didn't was say so it at the time. tasty. Why are you just saying that? I'm now? just, I'm like, I was remembering it like, oh, that was so good. The panini was the best part of the, end of the entire trip. I think you're just, we weren't you're even just in Blackpool. This. And then we got to Blackpool, and the first thing we saw was like smashed in windows and dog shit. Yeah, we went out a walk. We went out, we went actually, walk. it was like pouring rain. We went out a walk along the beach. We did go a walk in the rain and we found the pier. Found the pier. None of them were and open. The, the tram man. The tram man. Wouldn't it, it, it morning? morning. <laughs> they were such, like, every single ticket collector, people on the drive were like, they could have their own sitcom. I actually Absolutely. think they were in their own sitcom, the way they were acting with everyone. They're like, everyone that came on, they just knew them. <laughs> I felt like I was in Coronation Street. What was even the, the sentence? It was like, we got a, a day... You can pass. use a day pass. You can use that. You can use that on as bus. much as you like in all day, even to when even in money morning. <laughs> I, a lot of it was just wandering around and walking. We saw Nemo and Dory. We found Nemo and we found and Dory. Gil. And Gil and, and the the bubbles fish. Then there was eels, terrifying, terrifying Scary eels. Scary eels. It was turtles. We walked on the beach. We walked under the pier. We walked on sand. We. It was freezing. Some Tourette's guy threatened me, I think. Yeah, he, like threatened to burn your house down or something. Oh, you saw somebody fall off a bike? I saw someone f literally hit the curb and fall off their motorbike. <laughs> the Grinch followed us. It was They were hanging outside like a hotel or something. And then I accidentally made eye contact with the Grinch and he followed us. <laughs> a thousand, maybe more, fish and chip places. Like, every second thing was either a hotel or a fish and chip shop. We went to a big old antique shop. Mm-hmm. And I almost got lost in it. Just a corner with just Elvis stuff. There's like five pictures of James Dean scattered around the place. Oh, like, five pound picture of James yeah. Dean. It's like two... It said price non-negotiable, seven pounds. <laughs> That's out my, out my budget, I'm afraid. Can't do it. Can't be, Can't won't do. be buying it today. Just a, like one tiny section of the whole place that smelled so much like chlorine for some reason. Chlorine. There was a cafe in it, which was brand Maybe that's what made you ill. We went to a Wild West diner, even though it wasn't a diner, it was just a restaurant. It was just a restaurant with a Wild West theme. Yeah, and, did... and it was the smokiest place I think I've ever been to. I don't know, I did that with my hair or something, I'm like, I stink of smoke now. <laughs> but the shower in the hotel room was good, warm, warm and powerful. Flooding. That's because you didn't have to Tuck a shower curtain in a I bad did way. tuck in the shower curtain. Mm. And then I had to put the towel down. <laughs> and then you didn't think about hanging it up. Like, wow, you're so smart. You actually thought to hang up the towel. <laughs> well, I left it out for you. And then when I went back in, it was hanging up over the shower. And I was like, oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> we had a hot dog from the market. Oh, that was tasty as well. The hot dog was tasty. The bread was just bread. The bread was bread, but we still good. We looked at the tower. We couldn't go up the tower because it was shut. We sat at the tower... We met a seagull. We almost adopted a seagull, or a seagull almost adopted us, one of the I'm two. I'm going to put a picture up of the seagull. Yeah, I know, I was, yeah. <laughs> right here. It's literally the most chill seagull I've ever met in my life. It was just hanging around. Just hanging around. And then at one point, 
it just walked past us really casually, really close mm-hmm. to us, and flew away then so flew majestically. Yeah. <laughs> we just kind of we walked about. We walked everywhere. We just walked about. And then we got the train home, which was delayed, like crazy. Oh, it was like an hour or something. What a weird holiday. <laughs> Wouldn't it moan it? Wouldn't it moan it? We probably should do an outro. Anyway, that was the podcast. I'm sure you enjoyed it. If you didn't, subscribe and like and leave a comment saying exactly why you didn't enjoy it. Are we Koopa Plecturing it? Plecture? Plectum? We can. Who? <sighs> Garfield and Odie. Garfield is the turtle. And we're flipping for you. I am Dog. I am Garfield. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching the podcast. You are... You're amazing. You make it. You make it all worth it. We do it for you, really. So I'm we sorry. don't do it for us. If you've not already watched, watch both our of watch the watch alongs. Alongs. It's proof that we still get on in person. Bye. 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 <laughs>